Hello, so in this video we'll implement a very simple data structure, one of the most basic computer science data structures called stack. And here we have the API that we have to implement. The absolute minimum stack has to have these two operations. Push, which adds, pushes items onto the stack. And the pop operation, which removes or pops uh, the most recently, sorry about that, pushed item from the stack. So stack is a lipo data structure that is the last inserted item is the first to go out. We'll do it with TDD as the title indicates. So let's try uh, to have a look at the test that we I already prepared. We have a very dummy test comparing true to true. We don't need it. Here I have my console, my terminal. Let's run uh, some test. You're going to run it in the current di directory. I'm here already. So let's see if it works. Cool. So uh, I'm using Jest for as a testing library. It's a great tool for running tests on every change of the of any file in the given directory. So uh, let's write the first test. We have to think that what happens. I would say that the simplest test would be to see what happens when we pop from an empty stack. Uh, we could define it in many different ways. We could uh, return undefined or null. But I would say the most correct way is to throw an exception, as uh, this is something we should not try to pop something from an empty stack. We should somehow remember about uh, its size or state, but we will talk about it more later. So let's try to, um, we'll first define a stack, a test stack like this, and we will try to pop from it. And we will expect it to throw instead of to equal. Um, we'll expect an error, something like unsupported operation stack. Or maybe I will just call it stack underflow. You might be familiar with stack overflow, which is the problem which uh, happens when we have like infinite recursions and stuff like that. Um, stack overflow is the name of the probably the most notorious programming website on the internet in, two, in 2020. Um, but stack underflow is the opposite uh, when we try to pop from an empty stack. Okay, so here we have the first problem, stack pop is not a function. So let's add this function into our class. And we will, to make it pass, we will just throw new error. Let me copy this message uh, for, for a matter of simplicity and we'll just return it. This should work. It still doesn't work. Um, let's see what happens. Stack underflow, throw new error. Everything seems to be fine. Oh yeah, as far as I remember, this have to run inside um, an arrow function. Okay, so we have our first test ready. Let's rename the test. It throws when stack is when popping from an empty stack. And let's write another test. Um, complying to TDD methodology, we'll have to write an, a failing test first. So it, let's say that it pops the most recently pushed item. Let's say it's gonna be 11. So we're going to push an item. We'll change the test a bit. Uh, we'll expect this. This time it's gonna be to equal 11. So let's write a method called uh, push. As we can see, our Jest is complaining about this method not, not to exist. Uh, so let's push. Uh, it's gonna have an item to push. This should fail still because we always throw an exception. I would say that it would be cool to assign this item to some kind of an internal field of the class. And then if this internal field exists, we should not throw an error, but to return this field. But if it doesn't exist, then we should throw an error in the pop, uh, pop method. So let's say that we will call it um, item to be popped equals item. Right? And here, if 
this does not exist, we will throw an error just like before, but otherwise we will return this item to be popped. This should work and it works, that's amazing. But let's see, um, let's see if it works. If we push two items, let's say 11 and 13, and then we expect to 13 be returned first and 11 be returned as the second. Uh, it pops the most recently pushed items in this case, 11 and 13. Let's call it 13 and 11. Okay, so our test is failing correctly on the uh, on the second assertion because what we do here when we enter the push method for the first time we override this item to be popped with item but then the second time we enter here we forget about this value forever and we just override it which is incorrect we should somehow store both values so maybe um, the, maybe the cool idea to to store it without using any internal data structures like arrays because we want to keep it simple we want to pretend that we we have no data structures at all a very we just have very basic uh, javascript so uh, maybe we could somehow link the previously inserted element or the the most recently inserted the pushed element to the one before so maybe instead of this we could store an item like this right and a link to the next to be popped. Next to be popped would be this item to be popped. Oops, this should be a column. Okay, so our tests are still failing. We have to think about it here. We have to actually return an item because now our item to be popped is not an item, it's an object. Maybe we could rename it. So uh, let's rename it to be popped. Just to simplify, okay, here we have our test. Okay, the last test is still failing, why? Um, let's see where it fails. It still fails on the second assertion. The thing is that we kind of fix the push method, but we also have to modify the pop method because once we pop the last, the previously um, pushed element, we have to modify the stack and we do absolutely nothing we, we don't modify stack and pop method. So clearly something is incorrect here. I would say that uh, maybe we could uh, return it as a result, right? But um, when we pop, this is the result, we should actually forget about this uh, object we should reassign it to be um, to be popped next to be popped. So once we get once we pop an item, we forget about the current item. Well, we we save the current item as a result, which we will return. But we forget about the current object, and we start pointing the to be popped to the next item, next object in the queue. Let's say. And here it works, our tests pass. Uh, I would add one last test um, to our stack. What happens if we uh, alternate the operations? So we could uh, expect here 11 and here 13. Does it work? Yes, it works. So uh, let me clean it with prettier. And let's see if we can simplify some things. Well, thanks to ES6, we can just type item and it should still work here. And it works and that will be it. Uh, this is the very simple stack implementation with uh, TDD. In the next video, we'll probably tackle how to add some additional operations which will be super useful like size, like peak and like is empty. So yeah, see you in the next video.